So here we are, launch day for Spring Awakening. Yes, all the cast, the crew, and everybody from Hope Mill Theatre are here in anticipation to see exactly what this is going to be. It's the new musical to hit Hope Mill Theatre. It is a Spring Awakening. A shower. Piece, but there is like the standout character, and that's you. I, I would, yeah, possibly. There's, a, there's very uh, Melchior's supported by by the ensemble in in every scene he does. Mm -hmm. the, the ensemble's never off stage. Yeah. Um, and so and so they're the, the thinking heart around it. Um, but yeah, it's, it's it's the story really of Melchior and, and and his challenge against the system and how that um, and how everything sort of crumbles apart as he tries to do that. Uh huh. And how did you come about getting this role then? Um, well, I've just done three years at drama school. I've right. just at the Guildford School of Acting, literally like two. But you're from the northwest, is that right? Yes, I'm from Stockport. I thought you were. I recognise yeah. the accent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not Irish, even though the name is. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. So, um, so I went down um, to start my training three years ago, mm -hmm. and then uh, after my first show, I did Bullets Over Broadway, done mm -hmm. by Graham Gill, my first show in my third year, and um, and I was signed by an agent. And I was very, very fortunate, and um, you know, I'd been for a couple of auditions, and then I get this phone call saying. Um, uh, we've got you this audition for Spring Awakening, but you can't do the rehearsal time around the, the, your last show at GSA, which was Cats, directed by Chrissy Cartwright, mm -hmm. which was the most fun. Mm -hmm. um, and so uh, uh, my agent then ran my head of department saying, is there any way we can make this work? And my head of department said, um, we've actually been speaking to Luke Shepard because they've had to see a few people for, for, for this show. Um, and so they managed to, they organised something around the rehearsal process. So the first couple of weeks of rehearsals, I was doing uh, Cats in the evening and Spring Awakening in the day, so I was very tired. You've been busy. Hello, I'm Tim. I'm Adam. He's the Milky Bar Kid. <laughs> the Milky Bar Kid. I'm Christian. Christian. I'm Luke. Sophia. Tulare. Shayi. Beth. Who do you play? I play Hanshin. The Milky Bucket. Um, and he is the guy who falls in love, lusts after them. Um, he's kind of uh, that kind of typical guy who his role in the show is to sit and observe and he pushes the boundaries as far as he can but he never quite gets caught. Mm -hmm. yeah, sit and observe. Sit and observe. Explain more. Um, so he Unlike Melchior, who goes out and gets burned, and Moritz, who goes out and gets burned, he will push the boundaries as far as he can go, and he will push his relationship with others as far as he can go until he gets what he wants and then he leaves. Uh huh. Really cold. <laughs> it's getting darker. It's about these young people discovering themselves and like a lot about sexual awakening, mm -hmm. but also discovering kind of their beliefs and like core values and how that's reflected in their society and how that's been taught to them by their parents. And how does that relate to yourself within your real world? Is it quite a truthful story to yourself? Um, I think that as, as someone who's moved to England from Australia, mm -hmm. um, as I have, and just growing up in a lot of kind of smaller towns and then moving to, I live in Brighton, and oh. but living in like Brighton and London, which is a lot more liberated than where I was, I think I can understand kind of the way it opens up when yeah. you meet certain people and discover certain like factions of society that you haven't been exposed to. There are some very dark themes within this show. Uh, some of them I relate to more than others. Mm -hmm. um, 
And the hardest part of some of those is how personal it gets. Mm -hmm. But as an actor, one of the things that we do learn is that once you're out of the room, once you're out of the rehearsal room, you just have to switch off. And are you able to do that? Yeah. Uh, it takes a while. And when there was a day when I got particularly upset and Luke returned to me, he's like, you all right? And I just went, do you know what, I'm out. And, I, I, and he was like, right, let's go talk. And he took me down to the cafe and, we just, and he really spoke it all out with me, everything that I was feeling, everything that I related to in the piece. Mm -hmm. um, and it was more of a bridge of like, now I've been able to share that with you. And it's, for me as an actor, and it's paper shows and all of that, I prefer to go to the place and then work back from it so that you can recreate every day. Yeah. Um, and that's, that's my personal way of dealing with that. Yeah. The g great thing about having this show is as much as the girls are talking about boys and that is their function, they also have a really strong sense of loyalty and friendship to each other, which is something that I really enjoy playing. Yeah. It's not just, oh, there's a boy, I'm in love with him. It's yeah. So how can I be a good friend yeah. to these girls who mean the world to me, like me and my character? Uh -huh. experience that have finished this musical for an audience. And I think that's why Manchester's embraced our work so much mm -hmm. because it's impacted them. Yeah. Not only are they seeing shows they don't see at the Palace and Opera House, they're seeing musicals um, in a way they've never seen in the Proscenium March stage. So it's giving them a, a real sense of I think drama. sometimes people think because it's in a smaller venue that it's not going to be as good. Potentially. And the shows that I've seen at Home Mill, sometimes I have to say have far surpassed some of the big scale shows at the Palace, the Opera House, the Lowry. Yeah. So what's the secret? The secret is wonderful casting, wonderful production teams, creative teams, great shows, executed to the highest level. There's no difference really, except we don't have five people in costume and mm -hmm. 20 people doing something else. We have much smaller forces, but, it, but an intensity that people are responding to when they're watching it. So I, I'd love more people to come check us out. People can watch the show. Oh, because it's bold. It's bold and it's beautiful. It's, it, it's, got, it's got horrible themes. It's got it's got such ridiculous highs that you know roller coaster with some absolute lows. But then in the end, there's this just glorious feeling of rebuild. The last song sort of disconnects with the rest of it, and it's like, okay, we've gotten to this place. Life does get bad, um, but there's always rebuild and growth to move on from, which is why it's so massively, massively gorgeous. My favourite thing to be able to do that in this city. Particularly. When does it run? It runs from this Thursday till the 3rd of May at Home Office. Yeah, excellent. Thank you very much.